and welcome back to this special report. I'm Miranda Connick and David Brody has the week off. All right, so we have a few responses from you, Patriots, on Gitter. Uh, let's start with Diesel Cowboy Rob. Awesome panel fire emoji. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Also, Sergeant McCoy, the Pope is corrupt and the definition of a false prophet. Thank you, Sergeant. And Blaster Nation, Ultra Dark MAGA. I get a better idea. Abort the illegal alien. Ouch. All right. Thank you so much for weighing in with your responses. We love hearing from you. Thank you for being a part of our RAV family. And I do want to remind you that we do have a question for you. So if you'd like to weigh in, please do so. The question is, what does America need to do to get on track? So you can weigh in by posting a comment, or better yet, you know we'd love to share your beautiful faces, so you can do that by joining the RAV family on Gitter. All right, I want to welcome uh, back to today's uh, special report, our panel once again. Uh, Pro-abortionists continuing their protest in the DMV area in response to the overturning of Roe v. Wade. So Maryland police have already had to put out a statement now noting that they will enforce laws against disturbing the peace at the justices' homes. Meanwhile, though, ladies, a Harvard law instructor is now encouraging people to accost the six justices who overturned Roe v. Wade. Writing in a tweet, the six justices who overturned Roe should never know peace again. It is our civic duty, she says, to accost them every time they are in public. They are pariahs, she says. Since women don't have their rights, these justices should never have a peaceful moment in public again. An interesting sentiment, considering Democrats have essentially made it a part of their party platform to criticize Trump, even to this day, for, I don't know, accusing him of inciting an insurrection. All right, want to get your thoughts on this. Who wants to take it away? Anyone, anyone? Oh, Melissa, I got a smile out of you, so you're having fun with that. Let's start with you, Melissa. I think if you're in any public position right now or any public office, things are so crazy, and they really have been for the last couple of years. And I'm talking about going not just in Biden's presidency, but Trump's. People have to hire probably personal security. I mean, if you're a Supreme Court justice and you don't have uh, security around you. I mean, I, I don't know how you go out at night, quite frankly. I mean, people shouldn't be doing these things, but they are. And I mean, we saw in the riots of 2020 here in New York with the BLM riots. I mean, it was nuts. I mean, people are not following laws. There's, they're, they're not facing any repercussions for not following yeah. laws. The reality is people are going to continue to act like this and people have to take it upon themselves to protect themselves and their family. Well, comedian Alex Stein, in a way, kind of pointed out this hypocrisy. Here's what he had to say to Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on the Capitol steps just recently. See, si, my favorite big booty Latina. I love you, AOC. You're my favorite. She wants to kill babies, but she's still beautiful. You look very beautiful in that dress. You look very sexy. Look at that booty on AOC. That's my favorite big booty Latina. I love it. My favorite, AOC. Nice to meet you, AOC. Look how sexy she looks in that dress. Woo, I love it, AOC. Hot, hot, hot like a tamale. Uh, yeah, after that, AOC made a video in response, and here's what she had to say. Hey, everybody. I'm here in the Capitol. Um, see this guy right there? Right there. He, when I was walking up, um, he said, hey right in front of a Capitol Police officer. Hey, uh, here's this, look at that big ass, look at that big juicy booty, this Latina, like whatever, you know, all the bunch of racist, sexist stuff. And since nobody can do anything, I'm just telling you because um, this institution is not designed to protect people. And it's really hard and it's really sad that my only recourse is to just let you know about it, but that's the institution we're in. All right, but wait for it. The real kicker is that not only has her party called to not just protest, 
But again, a cost, the Roe v. Wade justices, but she herself has also advocated for protests. In a tweet from 2020, she stated, quote, the whole point of protests is to make people uncomfortable. And she went on to say to folks who complain, protest demands make other uncomfortable. That's the point. So it seems she's pro-free speech when it comes to going after conservatives, but not when it comes to herself or Democrats. And I wish, you know, it was, it was interesting. I was more interested in watching your expressions uh, when you heard that uh, that gentleman, uh, and I say gentleman, but uh, comedian, and that all relative, uh, making those comments towards AOC. We can agree or disagree on, you know, what he had to say. Was it appropriate? Was it not? I saw some of you smiling, some of you kind of mm, clinch, but, but it does seem a little hypocritical there that you're calling for, but when it comes to you, you seem so afraid and offended, but you don't care if other people are fearful of their own life. Let's start with you, Caroline. Well, I thought this was hilarious. I mean, it's crass and it's rude and it nobody should say that to, to a, well, one, a, a sitting congresswoman, I think, like she deserves some respect, but was she in danger? No. Did she have to engage with him? No. And to sit there and think that we were told that nobody at Morton Steakhouse when Justice Kavanaugh was there deserved to enjoy their meal peacefully because these people were protesting outside of Morton Steakhouse that, you know, Justice Kavanaugh didn't deserve a, a, a nice meal with his family or whoever he was with. Yeah. But she was completely disrespected walking into the legislative buildings. Like, it's just so silly. And it's like, just ignore it. Just move on. I don't, your life wasn't in danger. You're okay. You're a big girl too. Move on. Big yeah. Girl. And I think oh, go ahead. What, to add some context to this. So Alex is my friend and he actually, when you're in a conversation with him, he's one of the most intelligent and calm people you'll meet. But the whole point of this is that when he was in his hometown of Texas, he was going to these council meetings and these politicians that sit so high and mighty in front of everybody and hear the, the open floor sessions where the citizens can come speak, they're yawning, they're not paying attention, they're, they're wreaking havoc on our communities from a federal to local level, and then they couldn't care less when people actually come and express their grievances. So he said, you know what, I'm gonna blow down your little house of cards that you guys have established. I'm right. going to really humble you and make fools of you. And so he started speaking at local count, uh, council offices offices and stuff like that. And now he's going to Washington, D.C. to do this. And yes, I saw it and went, Alex, why do you have to say booty? I saw it. I saw it on your face. You know, at least you admitted it. Well, because we have the we have the video to back it up. But I did see yeah, the it. It's hard, but it makes a lot of sense when you're looking at it. If, if you think of they are sending federal resources to intimidate people that are concerned at school board meetings, they yeah. are really recognizing yeah. the federal government against us. And they sit so high and mighty. And Alex's whole goal is to really humble them and let them know that they really aren't that much out there all right well ladies stick around after the break uh here's probably going to be some music to your ears maybe we'll find out we'll get you to weigh in but is the gop the real party of women what they're looking to do i'll just uh, say maybe maybe steal a concept that democrats uh, once used will it work details next 